Operators are standing by. These are the boxes. And I will tell you what David Fast is going to start. I can tell you how God is. He gave this to me a year ago. And then he said to me in December, November, I want you to pull back in ministry. I don't want you to travel because I need to fortify you because something is coming. And I'm going to need you to be able to carry weight in the anointing. And he said, for everybody that's watching, that sold that 133, starting now, I'm sending you this box. The post office is open. UPS is open. A 5 a.m. prayer t-shirt which you will put on when we go live at 5 a.m. A prayer shawl, which you will use during consecration. A water bottle that you would use to drink liquids only until 6 p.m. And then it's one meal a day. And after you eat that one meal, you go back to drinking. And as we progress, we will remove the food. These kind come out by much fasting and praying. Prophetic dreams. Bishop George Sanders, bless you. I want everybody, if you can, to find a seed of $11. Those people that have struggled with so structures, so fractures, find $11 or 111, any seed with number 111. It is in number 11, which represents the number of betrayal. Remember, 12 disciples, Judas left as betrayal and 11 were left. So if you have a seed of 11 or 101, the Bible says, I cannot give God what cannot cost me. So give according to your ability. A seed on the portion of one, one one or one 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 or one 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 whatever in ones. Now I told you all that by the month of April. By the month of April. Like in the beginning part, maybe middle, <clears throat> the coronavirus will begin to dissipate. There it is, that prophecy on the screen you see there. God said it to me that the coronavirus will start to dissipate by the month of April. And so he gave me a time frame because I was like, did I miss it concerning, you know, getting this arena? And are they going to shut all of this down? And the Lord said, no, I told you I did all of this for the arena. Hallelujah. He did it all just so the world could meet him in Orlando, Florida, July the 10th through the 11th. Now, I'm telling you, what better place to be in than where miracles are going forth, a healing ministry. Amen. This is the time we need the healing ministry. This is a time we need the miracle healing ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. What better time? to support a healing ministry than right now. <clears throat> Amen.
how to give, but I want you to get your finances out now. I want you to get your credit card out now. I want you to move under the sound of my voice as a prophet. I want you to, some of you, we need right now, we need way over $3 million to do what we're doing. We actually need $30 million, $36 million to be exact. We need $36 million to be ahead of the game before before November, before December, way before December, before November is over. And I know God showed a dream that there is one man that can give 27 million. You have it. And God says one man can give 27 million of that 36 million you need. He says, and there are other people who can give millions, some hundreds of thousands. And so you got to be obedient. Don't let quarantine and this coronavirus make you be afraid of, of giving because you think all the money is freezing up. It's not going to freeze up. This thing will be over. It's really already over. God told me he was going to start dissipating about a month of April and that has happened. Don't operate in fear. You need the fear of the Lord, but not the fear of man. The Lord has spoken in a dream divinely since I've been in here seeking the Lord that there's one man that can sow a million, and then there's others who can sow a million some a million apiece and then there are others who can sow hundreds of thousands I want you to be obedient to God we need 36 million before the end of November and God said in a dream he would give it to us to do his will and his kingdom. So I want to say all of you who know you have money and reserves. Some of you say, I don't have a hundred thousand, but you have 20,000. You have 50,000 here, or you have 10,000 or some of you have 500. You can sow. And I know God came to me in a dream, spoke to me rather through a dream and told me that people can sow and give, but they are holding back. Don't do that no more. Obey his voice. Amen. Words of wisdom would increase all over this place right now. We pray for new modern day prophets who are 12 years old, 25 years old, 80 years old, men, women, black, white, Asian, Hispanic, all of them God. Now I'm gonna practice, and this is so nerve wracking, I'm just being honest, I, we've all sweat off our deodorant though, so it's okay. Um, and you're gonna have to help me, so I'm gonna give a couple, what I call Holy Spirit nudges or indicators, and then you, if it's you, you're gonna have to wave, no one else wave, and then if it's really you, everybody else has to start pointing, and we're gonna see it on the camera, and I'm looking for a dentist who you're either from the Ukraine or your parents were. Every single thing that Sean says comes directly from the social media accounts of Dennis. This is just a big trick. And you moved to America, and I think to Washington State or Washington, D.C., there's a dentist who your parents were from the Ukraine, you moved into America, help me out here, is there a dentist? So my story goes that um, my family comes from a Ukrainian background, so my mom, when she was about 16 years old, came into the United States, and my dad around not too long after that did as well, they didn't know each other, and they came and they, they got married in the United States, and uh, I was the second son born into the family. We've only done this in stadiums this big a few times, so it's a little hard. We have somebody. We thank God. Thank you, Dennis, for listening to God and showing up. Is there a screen I can see, or I can't even see a screen, I guess? Here, let me walk way out here and almost fall off the stage. This is good. Dennis, you're here. We 
know that prophecy is a spiritual gift and that we don't all have the same gifts. And number three, gifts are not something we learn. Yet, in these next clips, we'll see Todd falsely prophesy and admit it's okay. Does that name mean anything to you? No, okay. All right. I'll take risks, buddy. I will. <laughs> you never know if you're hearing God tell you ask. And if they say no, worse you can be is wrong. And if you pray, the worst that can happen is nothing. What do we got to lose? Except pride. Nothing needs to die. It's just like we see with Mike Bickle and the others saying that it's okay to be wrong 80% of the time. That's man, not God. And Todd, the worst thing that can happen is that you misrepresent God and the Christian faith with your false teaching and make others not want anything to do with Christianity. And do you notice, he covers it by changing to pride being an issue and that it needs to die. And the crowd goes wild. Oh my, okay, let me just, wow, that's fun. <laughs> I love you, Jesus and finishes it off saying how much he loves Jesus to divert from his false prophecy. Is there somebody that has some kind of shrapnel from a hunting accident when they were 17 years old? Or maybe, or 17 years ago? Which is it, Todd? 17 years old or 17 years ago? If God was really speaking to him, he wouldn't be confused. And with this sort of prophecy, it's a real guessing game. In a crowd of thousands of Texans, do you think there's a chance that maybe one of them had a hunting accident in their lives? Or that somebody had a sore back recently? Seriously, this is not a prophet of God. I just keep seeing the, name, the 17. Is there anybody that that fits? I'm good with missing it. <laughs> oh, I am. I'll take risks all day long, buddy. <laughs> I, I, God's okay with foolishness when it comes like that. He's okay with missing it, but God is not okay with false guessing prophets, and God's not okay with foolishness in his holy name. Even if you have a word of knowledge for a right shoulder and it's a left shoulder, either way, it's a shoulder and we're all learning and growing in God. We haven't, we haven't nailed it down. We're just listening and hearing his voice. You never know whether it's God or not unless you ask the question. Did you hear that? We never know if the voice we are hearing is God or not unless we ask the question. Well, Scripture teaches something different. Jesus tells us that his sheep do know his voice. And asking another human a question does not confirm the voice you heard was actually God. I just don't understand why people can't see through this. Right now, as we were as we release the storehouse of finances, he checked his account. And he just got twenty-five thousand rupees. Twenty-five thousand He said the angel of the Lord has been sent on assignment to take care of this particular virus of corona he said mark the calendar march 27th he said mark the calendar march 27th because something is going to take place that will be a shift in the realm of the spirit and he said, by May the 7th, there will be something that will also shift again in the realm of the spirit. This kind of prophecy is complete vanity. What will shift? Will I have a bowel movement? Will somebody next to me on an airplane wiggle their butt in their seat? What's going to shift, buddy? Now we're at your whim where anything you want to invent that shifted, Anything in the economy, anything in the weather, 
any kind of thing that happens, you could say, I told you there'd be a shift. Get out of here with your garbage ministry, buddy, you child of the devil. You are a false prophet. You are a joke. If you are a real prophet, you'll be able to come up to us and tell us there won't be one more coronavirus case after this day, period. Not that this is going to shift, that's going to shift. Now, you're telling us that there's going to be a shift on the 27th. There was no shift. It's continuously going upward, the cases of coronavirus on planet Earth. Continually and rapidly moving upward. There was no shift. None. It was only going in the same direction, buddy. You're a false prophet. And then you say there's going to be another shift on another day. That's your safety net shift. Now, you know when people are giving you all this junk? that they're false prophets. You know when they tell you that you have to pray for, for uh, their prophecy to come true, that they're false prophets. Because then when their false prophecy doesn't come true, they tell you you didn't pray hard enough. When it does come true, they just take the credit for it. And I've taught this multiple times. God never sends a prophet to tell you that he needs you to pray to get his work done. God could get his work done without sending a prophet at all. He does that for our sakes and the prophet. He doesn't need the prophet to carry out his work. The disciples came to Jesus and they said, Why do you speak to them in parables? To you it's been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom but to them has not been granted. For to whoever has, to him more shall be given, and they shall have an abundance. But to whoever does not have, even what he has shall be taken away. Therefore I speak to them in parables, because while seeing, they will not see. And while hearing, they will not hear, nor will they understand. Now that's an interesting verse, because now Jesus does answer the question directly, and it creates ten more questions. Maybe it creates 10 more questions for Chris because he is one of the ones that cannot understand. Jesus is clear in the next statement Chris makes. I think this, when the disciples say, why do you speak to the crowds in parables? And they go, it's been granted to you to know the truths of the kingdom, the mysteries of the kingdom, but to them it's not been granted. Jesus allowed them to understand. It's like for people today that we cannot truly understand Scripture without the Holy Spirit. It says in 1 Corinthians 2.14. My answer to that would be, why speak to them? Like, listen, if you don't want them to know the mysteries, then why even talk to them? You, you didn't get that. Listen, if I'm preaching here and I don't want you to know what I'm saying, why don't I just not take the opportunity to preach to you? I'd be thinking, why don't you not just take the opportunity to speak to them at all? If you don't want them to know, why not just be quiet? Have you ever thought through that? Like, if you're telling them parables, why not to say nothing to them? Maybe it was so his followers would understand that they had been granted understanding when others hadn't been. Without seeing that others couldn't understand, they might assume that everyone was understanding. That's just my personal thoughts. See, one of the most common statements that Jesus makes when he's preaching is, let those who have eyes see and those who have ears he hear. So what's he do? He hides his word so that only hungry and humble people can find it. This is wrong and puts focus on man and our efforts. Jesus was clear. Those who understood, understand because it was granted to them. And the only reason any of us is hungry for God today is because His Holy Spirit is in us. Scripture is clear in Romans 3.12, there is no one that seeks after God. So in other words, Jesus tells parables to hide truth, not from us, but for us. So that intelligent, wise people, and he's using those in a negative now, he's saying arrogant people. Jesus goes, I'm going to share my message in code so that only people that are hungry and humble can decode it. Like, it's the total opposite of American Christianity. <clears throat> when we preach, we want to make sure you got the point, we give you three illustrations, tell you a little story. 
right? You have to have six scriptures to validate that what you said is actually in the book. Make sure that the history of each scripture is actually validated so that all of the people that are in the crowd understand that you didn't make this up and that you didn't take it out of context and so on and so forth. Jesus is not that careful. I don't mean you shouldn't be. I just mean he wasn't. It's amazing how many scriptures, okay, this is going to be hard. I don't even know if I'm going to believe what I'm about to say. I don't even know if I'm going to believe what I'm about to say. <laughs> this would be a really interesting study. Take the New Testament and read what Jesus quoted and then interpret it to me. Okay? Follow me. And then go back to the different passages that Jesus quoted and see what the prophet meant them to mean when he wrote them. You're going to find a very interesting dynamic <laughs> that Jesus all, oftentimes took scripture out of context and meant it to mean something that the prophet didn't mean it to mean when he said it. But of course, if you're Jesus, <clears throat> you could do whatever you want because... <laughs> That's just a little funny. <laughs> so there you have it, and no, it's not a bit funny. It's a false man-made idea that is leading people astray. So how do we know this is not true? Number one, Jesus is God, and God wrote the Bible, not men. Number two, Jesus is the truth. And number three, God cannot lie. When a prophet in the Old Testament spoke, it was God speaking through them. Chris says that Jesus often took scripture out of context and meant it to be something that the prophet didn't mean it to mean when he said it. This is ridiculous. So Chris is saying that God spoke truth through a prophet and then Jesus made God's truth, his own truth, mean something different, which would make the original not true. We call that untruth a lie. This is such a terrible teaching, yet it's stated in such a jumbled way that his confused crowd can't see through it. the legal entity of Jesus Christ on the earth. Somos la entidad legal de Jesucristo aquí en la tierra. We have power and authority. Tenemos poder y autoridad. Tu palabra dice, Your word says, todo lo que ates en la tierra everything you bind on earth será atado en los cielos. Shall be bound in heaven. I need to rose up. Levántale orando lengua. Levántale. Todo lo que ates en la tierra everything you bind on earth será atado en los cielos. Shall be bound in heaven. Right now in the name of Jesus. Ahora en el nombre de Jesús. In the name of the Lord Jesus en Christ. En el nombre del Señor Jesucristo. I come in the spirit of dimension. Vengo en la dimensión espiritual. I take dominion. Tomo dominio. I said I take dominion. Dije que tomo dominio. I take dominion. Tomo dominio. Father, the Bible says Padre, dice tu the kingdom of God. Que el reino de Dios. We take it by force. Lo tomamos por la fuerza. Lo violento la arrebata. The violent take it by force. We are in the government of Jesus Christ. Estamos en el gobierno de Jesucristo. Somos parte de ese gobierno. We are a part of that government. Y en el nombre de Jesús. And in the name of Jesus. Toma autoridad. We take authority. Sobre todo espíritu demoníaco. Upon every demonic spirit. Every demonic spirit. Todo espíritu demoníaco. Behind that coronavirus. Detrás de ese coronavirus. En el nombre de Jesús. In the name of Jesus. We command the spirit Ordenamos ese espíritu. come out Vete. come out Vete. come out Vete. in the name of Jesus, en el nombre de Jesus I command that virus Ordeno que ese virus die se muere. die se muere. die from the roots se muere de raíz. but die from the seed se muere en la semilla. right now Ahora. y el demonio detrás de ese virus and the demon behind that virus Lo echo fuera. I cast it y out ahora mismo. I command it now stop Para. Stop. Para. Stop. Para. Stop. Para. Stop. Para. Para en el nombre de Jesús. Stop in the name of Ahora Jesus. mismo. Right now. Rompo el virus. I break the virus. Se seca. It dries up. Se muere. It dies. Y prohíbo que se transfiera más. And I forbid it to transfer anymore. Whatever I bind on earth Todo lo que en la is tierra bound in heaven. Está atado en los cielos. Y ahora mismo. And right now. I declare illegal. Declaro ilegal. Ilegal. Illegal. Su propagación en la tierra. 
power it to propagate y en el pueblo de China. And the people of China. Y ahora mismo, right now, todos los enfermos del virus, all the sick people from the virus, sean sanos. Be healed. Envío la palabra. I send the word. Envío la palabra. I send the word. Lo declaro sano. I declare it healed. Lo declaro libre. I declare you free. Right now. Ahora. Or the damn busters. Remember with the rolling bombs and that? That's what I do in revival. Come and blow up those dams, get the water to flow again. Come here, both of you, quickly. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Run, 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 run. Fire! 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 From the top of your head will shake your region, shake your town. Shake. Shake. Come here, both of you. Come. Quickly. Run, 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 run. Fire! Fire! From the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Fire! Fire! From the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Fire! 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 Feel. Top of your head to the soles of your feet. So here's what the Lord said to me all those years ago. He said, get the people under the anointing. He said, the longer they're in the anointing, the more they change. Fire! 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 Fire, fire. Filth, filth, filth. Fire, filth, filth, filth. Friday night. At 9.24. Now, Gloria and my usual routine is <clears throat> we go to bed early and listen to a couple of messages by Brother Hagen, watch the 700 Club, and by, you know, 10, 10, 30, turn the light out. Well, we had just listened to Brother Hagen, that first message, and suddenly the word of the Lord came to me. So I, I jumped up, ran, got my notepad, and wrote it down. 924. This disease called CODV19 will be over much sooner than you think. <laughs> Christian people all over this country praying have overwhelmed it. Give me all the glory, saith the Spirit of grace. And many, many people will come to know me through it. I'm still Lord over this nation. I'm on the throne, and faith in me changes things. <laughs> Glory to God. This coronavirus is, is faith in its ability to hurt you or kill you. Uh, <clears throat> the, the 
the, the fear of what are we going to do? I'm getting laid off at work. Hey, your job's not your source. Mm -hmm. If it is, you're in trouble. Jesus is your source. Whatever you do right now, don't you stop tithing. Mm. Don't you stop sowing offerings. Well, they won't let us go to church. Well, email it in there, text to give or something, but you get your tithe in that church. If you have to go take it down there and drop it off in the, and stick it under the door or something, right, you right. get that tithe in that church, you get that offering in that church, and then you go home and you do what we're supposed to do. COVID-19. COVID-19. Burn. Burn. 